Hey guys, Sunstreak so was here, and welcome back to another Thursday stream. Where, <clears throat> yes, today we're going to talk about the brand new uh, combats coming to Transforms Earth Wars. So, we've got Zor and Slugfest on the stream today exclusively. And don't forget, guys, the only way that you're going to see these exclusives, the only way you're going to see all my videos, everything like that, is by hitting that subscribe button, guys. But don't forget to also hit the notification bell. If you subscribe without a notification bell, you won't get notifications of the stream. So, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and never miss another video or another stream again. What else we're going to talk about today? So, some big news is coming in the last couple of hours, and I don't know what to think. Big news about a leaderboard change. Is it real? Is it an April Fool's? It's a bit early for April Fool's, but there's some things that sway me to think it might actually be real. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. Um, we're going to talk about the changes to Titans. I know that I've been campaigning for uh, Titans to be changed in some way. Uh, am I happy with it? I don't know. Again, we'll talk about that later. Uh, don't forget, guys, as well, if you are a Platinum member, we'll be doing a giveaway at the end of April again. So, bi-monthly, we give away a $30 gift card. And only way you can be in with a chance of that is by uh, being a member. Thank you, Grind Time, for uh, tipping $10. Don't forget, guys, obviously, you can tip uh, and you can obviously donate to the stream as well. But thank you, Grind Time. Appreciate it, as always. <clears throat> uh what else uh oh obviously go and check out uh grind times channel guys make sure and uh all your other content creators as well engineer hoist and uh arrow dj heart and soldier and whoever i've missed i apologize but yeah go and check out the other transformers earth wars content creators guys we're trying to get to 4k subs now we are close to 4k subs come on we can do this guys if you're not subscribed already guys just hit that subscribe button hit that subscribe button Let's go. Let's go. So, this week, what we've been doing this week, so it's been a bit of a crazy week, to be honest with you. <clears throat> um, so, um, we I've organised a date to meet Dale. Super pumped about that. And Dale said to me, yeah, uh, what, can we organise a time? We were supposed to meet in January, uh, but he was ill. Uh, we were supposed to meet in March, but then we couldn't really get the dates to match. So, he said, listen, let's, let's make this happen. Let's meet up. Let's get together. So, I said, uh, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, so we've arranged a date. Um, I'm not I'm not too sure I'm going to do a vlog yet or not. I need to speak to Dale about that. Uh, but it'd be cool to sort of speak to Dale and sort of like speak to him outside of the game, really. But yeah, can't wait for that. Um, obviously, uh, playing the game as usual. Not a lot of time to play the game this week, to be honest. A lot of busy in work. But also, today, uh, done another two combat videos with Tex. So they will be coming. We did have the healer video ready to go, but with that new healer coming out, we thought maybe it's best to wait off. But now, do I release it? I'm best waiting for tomorrow and see what happens. But uh, that healer video is ready to go unless we get the new healer. I need to wait for that, really. Uh, so, yeah, loads of content coming, like I said, guys. So, obviously, I do my streams every Thursday. I take snippets of the stream. I make videos out of it. If you don't want to tune in for an hour and a half, I kind of get it. Not everyone has the same time to watch streams and videos. So if you don't, uh, if you watch this stream and you think maybe an hour and a half is a bit long, two hours, then uh, make sure you go and check out them videos, guys. Uh, small snippets of the uh, little bits that I do in stream. And uh, yeah, as always, um, yeah, super pumped to be on stream again. So let's see who we've got in the chat. So we've got loads of, loads of codes to give away. Loads of codes. So what I'm going to do, first five people in the chat, you're going to get a code. All you're going to do is hit me for Discord and say, hey, what's up? I want a loot code, just being one of the first five in the chat. Give me my loot code. And I will. Easy as that. So, we've got Grind Time and SG Soundwave, two of our members. So, yeah, please at those two guys. I've got a code. Well done for being first and second. We've got Tiny T. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we've got Berserk, one of our uh, usual uh, people at tune in as well. And Penny Lancaster. So, yeah, if you all hit me up on Discord uh, after this, I'll throw you a uh, Sunstreak Wars Stash Crystal uh, over. Uh, for those that don't know, Sunstreak was a stash crystals. They've got spark in them. They've got uh, combiner spark. I think combat spark, prems. Uh, and a guy actually got um, a four star dupe with was that a G metal core? I think as well. Uh, and that's twice that's happened now. So Sharksy, one of our moderators, was one of the first when I first started giving the codes away. And a couple of people pulled a four star, but no one 
pulled a four star at Gmail. That's you know that's epic. And literally like a year down the line, someone did it the other week. So uh, you know I'm super pumped that we can do that for people. So yeah, so thanks for Space Eight for obviously giving us them codes and uh, super pumped because sort of do that. Who else have we got? Uh, so we've got Rescue in the chat. Welcome to the chat. We've got Bricks Motion again. We've got Andrew Stevenson. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Chris Harmon as well. So a couple of uh, new faces as such. Uh, we've got MD Prime. How's it going, bud? Uh, we've got Carnage McEight. Uh, <laughs> and the reason I say it like that, <clears throat> for those that don't know, um, there was a comedian that you might know, actually, in America. He was huge at the time. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. Who did um what was the guy the character called? Um Ali G. Ali G. He also did Borat and things like that. But he did it Ali G and that's the way he said it. He always said I. So as soon as I see that, I automatically just think of that I. Uh we've got a lot of Avix as well. Um and it just skips ahead, so let's get back and see whoever we got. Uh, Lord A, because like I said, Sharks here, as I mentioned earlier, thanks for joining in. Uh, we've got Lancer from My Alliance, welcome brother. We've got Warpath uh, SB, uh, hey, FPS Gaming, so yes, go and check out the FPS Gaming podcast, uh, guys, honestly. Uh, I went on there the other week, and I tune into that every single week. Uh, yeah, really cool guys, like, so go and check out FPS Gaming, and obviously the Arrow DJ Heart appears on that. Make sure you go and check out Frankster's uh, stream there. Uh, we've got uh, Calvin as well. Uh, Ricky Lau, Christian Cruz, we've got uh, Generic, uh, Garrett, my brother, how's it going? We've got uh, Mitchell in the chat, um, Joseph Torillo, I, I always I always think of, uh, what's that singer called as well, I want to see yours, Thingy Torillo, I can't remember his name, I'm too old for that sort of stuff, but yeah, I always think of him when I see your name, it's weird how these things sort of like picking, uh, and Victory Star Saber as well, so yes, welcome everyone to the chat, so as always, we're going to go through the news, uh, talk about the newsletter, and then we'll uh, kick off in the stream. So, this week's news. The event is The Dig. Um, and it makes you think that, was this sort of preempted about the nose cone change being called The Dig? Mm, who knows, who knows. So, this week's event, we've got 1,000 five-star shards, 50 assembly loot chests containing four-star, three-star, and prems. Uh, we've got a G-Metal power core chip, three G-Metal building power core chips, and seven gold building power core chips. 200,000 combiner spark and 200,000 spark. Personally, I need that combiner spark. Really do. Uh, I'm literally got none left pretty much. I think I've got 40k. Uh, I've got some total sparks, but I'm maxed on sparks, so I can't open them yet. So I need that combiner spark to get my uh, defense up to 20. And I think I hear you saying, "Well, was it? Why are you getting defense up to 20? Because five star combiners are coming, guys. And I'll guarantee. I will guarantee. I will put money on this. I make these sort of speculations, and I'd say 75% of the time I'm right. I'd say personally. But um, Defensor and Volcanicus are Abominus and Predaking. Those will be the two first five-star combiners, I think. Maybe more, but definitely those two, without a doubt. So if you are going to level up some combiners, if those two aren't quite 20, get them leveled up, guys. I mean, Omega's is obviously a priority, and Magnaboss as well, and that's the problem. So many good combiners that you need to level, especially with the five-stars coming. But we need that combiner spark, without a doubt. Uh, so, Super XP, like I said, the usual battle zones, usual points, nothing changes there. Uh, the event did change. It was less shards, and a lot of people, including myself, sort of complained a bit, saying, you know, we should have more shards in there. So, they changed it from, I think it was like 700 shards and chance to 1,000 guaranteed and then chance without the five stars. I'd rather have the five stars in there, and I understand Space Ape's sort of direction of that we're already giving you 1,500 in the battle pass. So, you know, we're giving more five-star shards away, and I kind of get that. But that should not infringe on events. Events should not go backwards. And you have a bit, but I'll never complain about a five-star event, ever. And we'll have a bit of an update on my account later as well, and we'll talk about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and things like that, as always. Um, 
So, yep, yeah, usual, like I said, 1 million point event, which works out about 25k per player. It is quite achievable, free to play, if you're a fairly decent player. Uh, if not, it is worth a bundle to get them shards, guys. It was just a 20 quid, $20 bundle. A $20 bundle will definitely get you over that line uh, if you use the uh, coins just for sell regens. So, uh, yeah, always worth doing. So, game update. So, Pinpointer and Singe are now in the uh, premium premium freeze, character specifics, and five star uh, batches. And uh, yeah, a good combat. Uh, like I said, we just covered this in mine and Texas uh, videos we do. We've done that today, uh, part one and part two, because there's so many to sort of go through. Uh, and yeah, really good combat, guys. But, yeah, I won't give my sort of judgment on that. I've already talked about it previously. We've talked about it in the video. So, make sure you go and check out that video. If you want to know about uh, Pinpoint and Singe, uh, Zor and Slugfest uh, in a challenge battle and uh, looking pretty good. We'll uh, run them through their paces shortly. Uh, bundles this week are Alita, One and Stripes. I I'm not a fan of these bundles, guys. I'm not going to lie. Of mixing bots and combats. Because what will happen is I'll be close to a 5 star and I might think, oh, I want a certain bot. <clears throat> well, any bot, let's be honest, a dupe. And so I want bots. Or I might be close to a 5 star combat. I think, I want combats. But this gives a mixture of both and doesn't exactly give the full value. And it's same if you're chasing just bots in general. If you want a leader, you're better waiting for a leader bundle rather than getting these mixed bundles. And yeah, you've got a chance to get both. But what if you've got one of them and you don't really want the other one? So... Not a fan of mixing these bots and um, combats together, but let me know what you think, guys. I'm not a personal fan. Uh, are they better than the old ones? Um, I don't know. I don't know. So, yes, Zor and Slugfest that we'll be looking at later. So, new bots. Well, is it? Is it, though? Is it? Minerva and Flatline are coming to Earth Wars, but are they? That's the big question. So... We'll, we'll address it now. Why not? We've said it. We've seen in the chat that Space Ape have said that they're struggling to get the artwork together. Well, it's there. It's, it's on the screen. Just, just use that. I don't know. But, you know, they're struggling, struggling to get the artwork, and so they're going to change it to a nose cone event? What? What? Are, are you serious? Are, are you actually serious? I mean, come on. I mean, come on. I, I mean,. Come on, seriously. I mean, <sighs> words fail me. They really do. We're going to do a leaderboard event for a bot that everyone's got. And I mean, if they're going to rework it and make it really good, we've not got long. Has it been going in the background? And then the question is then, you get the top five, the five star, which is fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. No problem. Dale said it would definitely be a war bot. So I am fine with that as always. But what do we give? Six to ten, who've already got the four star. And Dale was like, Well, you'll be happy then when the rework happens, you've got the four star. I was like, Yeah, but if I've got the four star already, why do I want another four star? That's a dupe. That's just 185 star shards. If that's the case, they really need to up the five star shards. But yeah. But, you know, I'm hoping it will be good when they do buff it. They are going to buff Snow's Cone, that's no doubt about it. Um, But, you know, they really need to um sort this leaderboard out. They can't do that, surely. They can't. And I'll be honest with you, it was, in, uh, it was announced in Cybertron and announcements. And when I seen it, I was like, yeah, this is an April Fool's. And I was like, well, it's not April Fool's. It's not April yet. It's the day before. I mean, and someone said, yeah, but it is in Australia. But I know Space Ape and Dale are based in the UK. So why would they do it the day beforehand? Why would they do it today? Surely it'd be done tomorrow if it's April Fool's. And we'd all know it's an April Fool's. Because we're like, yeah. But then maybe that's the reason they've done it now. Because everyone will know it's an April Fool's. So it's a bit early. And then at that point then, I was still a bit on the fence thinking, yeah, probably. It's probably just an April Fool's. And then, Dale put in the uh, playtest chat, we're going to send you Nose Cone shortly to look at the uh, rework. And that for me was like, wow. Well, if he's put it in, if he's put it in the... Uh, play test chat then that's not just trolling some people in cybertron that's going a whole another level so it's either dale has gone troll 1000 which we know he can do we've seen that on my streams we've seen that so we know we can do troll 1000 or are we really seeing nose calling again in a leaderboard an old bot 
Are we setting that sort of precedent? I hope not. I hope to God. I'm excited for these bots. Um, there's no news yet on ability to these bots anyway. I mean, they said they might push it back to a chance event maybe or something after that. Uh, but personally, what I'm looking for in these bots was a while back, I've said in my streams, I passed it on to Dale, and I always try and look at something where... It's something not in the game yet. I try and look for new mechanics or new things. New things to make people work differently or think about the bots they've already got. Bringing out better content. And for me, I would like to see a healer that heals like Ratchet, but has an attack ability. That's what I'd like to see. You know, Ratchet is a heal ability. Wheeljack is a speed up ability. You know, their support abilities. I would like to see a healer with an attack ability. That's what I'd like to see, and I'm hoping these guys do. It'd be kind of epic, to be honest with you, if they do, and something different in the game. Uh, but they've got a new, uh, like I said, a new uh, guy on the team called George, and this guy knows what he's talking about in terms of, um, in, in terms of the game and things like that. He's a uh, he was a massive player in Clash of Clans, one of the biggest. Uh, he was a YouTuber for Clash of Clans as well. He knows his way around programming. So this guy should know what he's talking about. And this guy could hopefully bring some new things and new ideas to the table. And I'm excited for, the, uh, for what George can bring. I really am. So, uh, yeah, it'd be cool to hopefully get him on the channel one day, uh, like we do Dale, and sort of pick his brains about his, uh, you know, his backstory and how he got into Space Saver, things like that. And uh, where he will hopefully see the game going. You know, not just the... the the company's direction, but his as well. So yeah, but interesting. Then obviously you got myself uh, in the newsletter. Uh, like I said, me and Tex rating all the bots in the game. I do have to make an apology though. Uh, we've recently released a triple changer uh, video and a bit of a face palm moment that we actually forgot broadside of triple changes. I don't know how I missed that honestly, um, but yeah. Sad as it is, uh, and people have sort of like been bombarding me, going like, "You know, you missed broadside." I was like, "Yeah, I didn't know, but trust me, I definitely know now." Uh, I've been told many times, so apologies for doing that. Uh, but maybe we can look at it later in the year and review it and add him in then. But uh, yeah, grand times, put rookie mistake. Yeah, it was. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, then we've got some cool art from some of the uh, members in Discord. And the Saga schedule, we are on week three of six, the one million five-star event. We've got a total of next week, and we haven't even got a clue what's going on. We've got prime core shards after that. Eh. And then obviously the leaderboard end of that. So we'll have to wait and see. So bug fixes and improvements. So Metroplex and Trypticon. So this is a bit of a sore point for me. So... Uh, obviously, I, I need to talk about how my channel works as well, and sort of give people an idea because I've come under a bit of criticism recently, and I'm you know I'm not I'm not against criticism. We all get it, you know. It's fair enough, you know. It, sometimes it can help your channel grow. This channel has changed over years because people have given me some criticism and said this was a I'm not liking this of your channel. I go yeah, let's change it. People criticize saying the streams are too long. I've took snippets out, made it smaller, and made videos out of it. That creates more content for me. You know, more views, maybe more subscribers. So it's helped me. So that criticism has helped me. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But it has to be founded. You know, there has to be some sort of, you know, facts behind it. And so when I did my Sea Spray Vulcan, Broken video, uh, the Sea Spray fix was long coming. We, I, I could tell. Any, any bot in the game that has been able to do a huge amount of damage from the launch pad has always been fixed. Whether it was, um, when it was tracks, or, or in terms of like, you know, not just damage, but protection, protection as well. Um, when it was tracks, when it was uh, air show, whether it was even doing, um, you know, cup, um, cup and friends or backdoor attacks. There's always been some counter for these things that there's no counter for. Uh, Goldfire and Ramjet as well, yes. Uh, you know, all these things have been countered, these overpowered things in the game. So it was no surprise that, you know, Sea Spray was going to get a counter. It was no surprise at all. So I foresaw that like most people would. And I thought, right, well, I'm just going to do a video on how it is broken and what I would do to fix it. So, yeah, I did say that. And my idea was put back. I think I'd, I had the idea for this in December, maybe, where I put the idea of buffing the uh, anti-stun cores. 
because there's part of stun. And then when I thought about it, I thought, yeah, well, that affects maybe ability 11. Does not affect 10? So maybe they won't go with it. It's a good count of Bumblebee as well. So that's a good thing. So it had good points and bad points. Um, and whether the apes chose this, my idea, whether someone else had the same idea, whether other people agree with it, I don't know. Who knows? Um, and so when the new core came out to counter sea spray, people lost their minds and was like, why are you listening to Wuzzer? And I was like, listen, it doesn't work like that. I give them my ideas. They might like my idea. They might not. I've caught with a hundred ideas. I can't even tell you how many ideas I've passed on to the apes over the years. It's hundreds. It really is. And just because one of them came to fruition doesn't mean that they just listened to me. You know? So that happened. Uh, and it was all, yeah, just because Wuzzer did the video. I was like, this, this was going on long before this. We knew this was coming. We knew it was going to be a sort of, sort of fix, and no, I can see some people asking if uh, Sea Spray has been nerfed in any way. No, but they brought out the course to sort of counter him. That's what I'm saying. And I've always said I want options in the game, more and more cores, more and more bots, better bots, um, but not to put overpower. There should be some sort of counter so that you have a choice what to defend against. And I think we're close to that now in terms of using the build bots, and we can move away from that and look at something different. Um, but yeah. You know, there is a, you know, there is some balance in the game. It needs to be balanced. So, that was my idea about being uh, broken. Uh, and then, I did what about the MSM mines. They are broken. They are. So, no doubt one day they will get fixed because they're not working as intended. That's a fact. And then I recently did one about Titans saying they're massively overpowered. Now, going back to when Titans were released, even in playtest... I said to Yanis, I said, the problem I've got with these Titans is, Titans are huge, they're absolutely enormous, massive. So they need to do incredible damage because of the size. But they're doing incredible damage, you're too reliant on them, it's too much, it's overpowering. And then the other end of the scale, you can make them do less damage. So they're not as influential. But then you've got a huge robot that doesn't do as much damage as a tiny robot so you, you've got to think about scale and i know that transformers doesn't really think about scale but i mean come on when you've got a mile high robot against a 50 foot robot well then the mile high robot is obviously going to do more damage it makes sense uh, but it has to be balanced in some way and my idea for a fix was that uh you know you can make titans only appear in hq uh 16 there's been some suggestions that titans shouldn't be in war maybe uh they were taken out of zen because they thought it was unfair so you know where do we sort of go with this you know it's a whole other video on its own really but i said at the very least the only time that i've been really really frustrated with a titan was when it used its four star beam and it took out two-thirds of my team and I dropped points against a, a base that I probably shouldn't have. I had a full team, they were all grouped together and literally this one beam took out like five bots and I wasn't happy with that at all and I, I messaged Dale saying, listen, I, I show my replay, I was like, this can't happen. You can't have it where you beat the, the base and you're doing really well and just because your titans lost to another person's, you lose five bots. You've automatically lost. There is some sort of balance and my idea was that, um, Take away the percentage increase that you do damage to bots. So we have damage increase to uh, bots and damage increase to titans. Take the damage increase to bots away and make it a singular beam. Make it very, very powerful, but to one bot. And so, yeah, listen, if you defeat, if you're there fighting, <laughs> if their titan beats yours and then it uses ability on your bots, you might lose one bot, and you can't guarantee what bot it is. And that's where your tactics come into play, where you're like, right, well, I've lost that bot now, so I need to change my strategy a bit and maybe step my game up or do something to counter that. You know, you can throw a rook at it to maybe distract the beam, or you can use your minions or something. So I'm all for that, for a trip to go on Metroplex, taking one bot out, but not five bots. You can't have that. If you lose one bot, you can still win the war if you've got your wits about you. But you can't just have a whole team wiped out. And that was my idea. Uh, but sadly, um, they've gone with something a bit different. So um, the idea is that they're looking at just reducing the damage all across the board. And I'm, I kind of get that a bit. But you do want them powerful. You do want to have some use out of them. Uh, and they said there's going to be more, uh, more news shortly. But Fabian has said that it was doing more damage than it should have. So, we'll have to wait and see. 
but yeah, it'd be an interesting conversation and an interesting sort of viewpoint on where it goes. Uh, then we've got the next lot of G1 core. So we've got Skylink, Firefly, uh, Rodimus Prime, uh, and Perceptor. Uh, they're looking actually pretty decent, these cores. Looking pretty decent. The only issue I've got is that I don't use any of these guys. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Skylink, but that's probably the one that I would use out of this batch. Um, I don't use Firefly because I've got Jetfire. I do like Firefly's ability 11, not going to lie. Uh, over jet fires, but I'm not going to chase Firefly in that batch. I think it's one of the worst batches in the game. So I'm not going to bother. Uh, Rodimus Prime, Motormaster. Yeah, they're all right. I use the four star sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of Rodimus Prime, really. Uh, and then Perceptor. I've got Blades. I prefer Blades. So um, yeah. <coughs> so, but the cores are looking good. A lot of good feedback around these cores. Uh, they're not quite finalized yet. I was going to show them on stream tonight, but Dale said they're not quite finished yet. There might be a couple of changes. So next week's stream, we'll definitely be showing the new G1 cores. Uh, and hope you have some more news about the leaderboard and the new bot or nose code or whatever's happening. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then there's the things they're working on. I like this, you know, that they're uh, sort of announcing what they're trying to do. So they're looking at a, a way to display in-game where firing acid is used. Um, and then uh, five-star level 11 for bot abilities. Now... <clears throat> Again, we've sort of passed some information onto them and some sort of opinions that we should have five five star bots because the feedback we've given them is that on a lot of the cases, the four stars don't really get ability eleven that much. They don't. We don't really give ability eleven to four stars as much as five stars. Five stars get priority, and because we've had so long since the last five star batch, uh, sorry, since the last ability eleven batch. Um, we could do with some decent five stars in there for people to spend it on. I'm nearly maxed out in Spark. I've got Spark in Inventory. I've got Total Spark Crystals. I've got Spark everywhere. I want to spend it. So I need at least a couple of bots to spend it on. Um, but, you know, there needs to be top, top um, bots to do that. Um, but, yeah, it all depends on who they're going to pick. Uh, but who would you like to see? Who would you like to see uh, the next uh, batch of Ability 11? Who would you like to see at the five stars? I would like to see in there. Let me know and I'll pass it on. Um, it's quite hard, but um, yeah. You see, the problem is you don't want to give an ability to a massively overpowered bot. I can see a few people saying smoke screen in the chat. Yeah, I'd like smoke screen to get uh, ability 11, but it's got what is G1 core and everything else, and it's already pretty decent. Um, Featuring Star Saber said Star Saber, that's a good one. I, I like giving ability 11 to bots that are outside the meta, but don't forget. He is a four star, not a five star, but I would like to see Star Saber get ability eleven. That's a really good suggestion. It's bots like that. I like ability eleven for bots that were that have fell away a bit from the meta, are still good, but are not quite in the meta anymore. You know, and I was hoping that um I was hoping that Cheeto would get a decent ability eleven, and he didn't quite get it because he's fell away from the meta a bit. Um, you know, Pr Prowl was you know okay, but you know, we need some decent ability 11s. We really do for these bots that have fell away a bit. So, uh, yeah, it's to be seen. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, they've also said Nosecone and Drillhorn is getting an overhaul. Uh, whether it's an April Fool's, whether it's not, uh, those guys will be getting a uh, workout. And um, apparently it's going to be really good. But, yeah, that is, uh, that is uh, to be seen. But, yeah, that is the news. So as always, we are on the test server. So because we're on a test server, test server disclaimer: This is a test server account given to me by Spaceshape to be able to exclusively show new features. This is in no way connected to global, and all values are given to me by Spaceshape for testing purposes. To have access to a test account, you must be a play tester or content creator, and to become a play tester or content creator, you must apply when applications are being taken. No, I am not a hacker. And this is not my normal global account. This has been your test server disclaimer. And thank you, Grind Time, for that really shoddy English accent, but appreciated nonetheless. Um, so yeah, we are on the test server. So yes, we're going to be uh, having a look at the new combats, uh, Zor and Slugfest. So um, we're going to show a uh, Slugfest first in the showroom because we don't want to be accused of being factionist. And uh, yes, that is a word 
factionist. Um, you know, we don't show cons maybe as much as we should do in this channel. So, um, yeah. Well, I can't remember who's the uh, equipped on to. Oh, yeah, SG Sockwave. Of course he is, yeah. SG Shockwave, where are you? There we go. I'll put an SG Shockwave because they're both really bright in colours. I did think about putting it on um, SG Jetfire or SG Thundercracker, but uh, yeah, I think he suits colours-wise. SG Shockwave, anyway, at least in colours. I transforming SG Shockwave. Not like you need to see that for the uh, combat, but yeah, looking pretty cool. And then let's have a look at the other one. And I can't remember where I put him either. Did I put him on Sea Spray? No. Did I put him on Brainstorm? No. Where did we put the bot version? I actually got like three of them equipped, but oh, of course, yeah, on Rook. Of course it did. Uh, and then we've got Rock, and then we've got uh, Zor as well. So a little bit of little Dino, little Dino buddy. So yeah, looking pretty cool. I do like the uh, you know, the artwork. Looking pretty cool. Never heard of them, but uh, pretty cool nonetheless. So ability wise. And I've also been told that he's a... Uh... There we go. Can we add the music? Let's have a look. There we go. Can you hear the music? I did actually try and put some music on on the last uh, stream. And um, someone said to me that. It was actually grind time, actually. Said, uh, you know we can't hear the music, right? So I was like, uh, really? So, um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Bit of background music. Okay, let's have a look at this guy. So, five-star Zor maxed out. Zor has 19,000 health. That is, 19,000 health is as much as a four-star tank. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, and could cause 487 damage per second. So, decent DPS. I mean, some bots don't have these sort of stats. 19,000 health and 487 DPS. So, you know, very, very good combat in terms of stats. But we know that sometimes these stats can lie a bit. You know, sometimes see these stats and I'm like, whoa, it's amazing. And then we try it in battle and you're like, well, it's not quite as good as I thought. Uh, but then every 10 seconds he fires a mini orbital strike dealing 400% of his own DPS to enemy defences. There was a bit of confusion around this. People thought it was 400% of the bot's DPS. It's not. It's 400% of his DPS. So 400% of this figure. So if you want to know how much damage he's doing, all you got to do, guys, is times this by 4. So cause it, let's call it 500. So a maxed out 5 star will do about 2,000 damage. About 1,800, give or take. So, uh, yeah, you know, pretty decent uh, combat in terms of figures. Then if you look out at the max star, maxed out four star. So the four star has thirteen thousand health. So you know, still a decent amount of health. Three hundred forty-four DPS. So you know, still a decent, you know, decent amount. And every ten seconds again, does four hundred percent of his DPS. Exactly the same. So the ability sort of stays the same. It's just these stats that change. Uh, then we've got the three star. Uh, three star isn't leveled. I'm afraid. Uh, we could do a quick level in show they quick. Uh, I didn't actually have the free start. I had the, f the two, four, and five, and said to Dale last minute, "Can you please summon the three start they quick?" And yeah, still thankfully, thanks Dale. Um, and we'll put it up to level five. I think. Uh, nope. I think level five's a uh, decent level for a free star. You know, I won't put it past six. So if you do get a three star and you pump it up to uh, level 5 you're looking at around 6,000 health and 200 DPS so you know still decent you know just for a uh, combat it's gonna take some hits it's gonna do some damage and then 400% uh, of that is around 800 damage 
to whatever target. And then we've got the two star down here as well. If you'd like the two star level five. Uh, and again, four times that is around uh, about a thousand damage, give or take, uh, at level uh, five. So, so yeah. Same, obviously same stats. Uh, we've got a level seven five star there. 16k and 400 DPS. So, let's try him in battle. So we're just going against our own base, sort of seeing primary. That's what I sort of test. Uh, but we've got to keep in mind that this is just a combat. This is not an ability they're going to use. It's not going to wipe out the entire base. The idea is that it's going to sort of help you get through certain certain situations or you know, do extra damage or something. So put Shockwave down. And there he is. There was the Orbital Strike. So you see the Orbital Strike comes down. As soon as he pops, so that's pretty decent. You can see there, he's doing decent DPS. It's probably even going to outlive SG Sockwave at this rate. So, doing plenty of damage, nice ranged attack, staying back a bit, staying close to the bot. There's the Orbital Strike coming down. And there we go. So yeah, pretty cool combat. Like I said, it's not going to be game breaking to the point where this orbital strike is going to come down and kill half the base in Prime League. Uh, but you know, if it's going to come down and finish a defense off, something like that, yeah, pretty cool. So let's talk about the pros and cons. <coughs> Drop them again, and you can sort of have a look at him while I'm uh, sort of chatting. <coughs> so pros. Good health, really good health, uh, really good DPS, and sits back. You know, is it on the front line, going to go running ahead and get killed, a bit like Night Stalker does, with that melee range. He has a ranged attack. So, in that sense, yeah, really good work. Uh, really think it's been, uh, you know, well done. The only big issue that I have is not just with this, but with most companion bots, is... That the problem is, is that what this what space are sort of doing at the minute is they're trying to take abilities within the game and then bring them into the game, but with some, you know, with an ability you can put it where you want. It's too random. That's the only problem is, is that you can't decide where it's going. It'll fire it where it fires, but that's it. You might have resource building. You might want it to finish up a mortar and it hit a cannon and not do nothing. And then with a health regen, it's just going to regen health. So, you know, it's not awful, but it's more the concept behind all these combats. So, we talked about SG Steeljaw uh, previously, how random the, the smoke was. And that was the problem, that sometimes you can put smoke not where you want it. And that's the problem for me. And I feel like they're going down a path now of trying to do this, of getting all old abilities uh, that are half decent and put them into a combat. And... Yeah, it's okay, but I'd like to see some new mechanics in the game. I've said this previously. I want to see some new stuff. I don't want to see all the old abilities rehashed. You know? And we're seeing that too much with these sort of uh, companion bots. But, on the whole, you know, would I chase him as a five-star? I'm not sure I'd chase him. Would I be disappointed in pulling him? No, not by any means. I'd actually be quite pleased if I pull him. But the question is, who do you replace in your war team now? You know, for me, uh, I've got Shieldron and Rook. Would this guy replace Shieldron? Nah, I don't think it would. Uh, would it replace uh, Taraxodon on Blaster? Not in a million years. It's not going on a gunner. Let's be honest, it's not going to the top shot or flak anytime soon. But no one does. Can you put it on a healer? Yeah, you could take Rung off and put him on a healer, maybe, and stay back a bit. So, yeah, that's an option. But there's just so many good options out there that, for me, the randomness is the killer. That's the one thing that... But there's no solution for that, because you can't decide where these um, where these combats are going to hit. So, it's a bit of a hard one for me. Um, you know, it's, I'm a bit on the fence with it. It's not poor, it's not amazing, but it's got its uses. And, you know, that's where it's pretty good. 
So then I thought maybe quite could be quite good for power leveling. Maybe. And so today I've done some bit of testing with a few ideas I had, and I thought, hence why it's on SG Shockwave. I thought, you know what? So when I was talking to uh, the Arrow DJ Hart on my uh, channel uh, and on his as well, we were talking about what people rate as a bot. So obviously I rate war bots. That's what I my primary primarily um, sort of viewpoint is that I want war bots. And so. Um, I thought, you know, that's what I look at. And DJ Hart was saying, well, I don't really care for war too much. So I look at power leveling bots. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can I can get that. I can see that. Uh, lower players that don't really use war want power levelers. And so he said, he doesn't want, doesn't like Brainstorm, SG Shockwave, these sort of support bots, because they can't really do much in terms of power leveling. It's very difficult for them to get through the base. So I thought, well, this could be a good alternative. This could be a good option. You know, putting this guy on a support bot and then let the bot, the combat bot, hopefully take out some of the defences. So, I mean, it's not going to work in Prime League. We don't power level in Prime League. But, you know, I would normally power level in Zone 13. But let's, let's go into 12. Nothing crazy. So, like I said, we've got a, a 5 star level 7 on here. So, just decent amount of damage. And so the idea was, I thought, I'll send off SG uh, Shockwave. So here's the plan. We're going to drop SG Shockwave. We're going to hit these defences here. We're going to hit these defences here. And then hopefully, uh, Zor will hit those and then take them out with the uh, glass gas. Good idea, I hear you say. I like your idea, was it? Let's give it a go. So we're going to hit there. Zor some, does some decent damage there. He's a bit higher level, I think, to actually do it. There we go. Let's do SG Shockwave again. Get a few seconds for Zor. So charge up again. Then we'll hit these here. Hopefully hit one of these. Yep, he's took that out there. Is he going to hit over here? Let me put him over here. Oh, he's hit there. Never mind. There we go. And there we go. And base down. Impressive, right? Would it surprise you if he said... It's taken me about 10 attempts to work out the pathing of where those orbital strikes go. That was the main problem. Is that you put an ability down. You think, yeah, I'm going to put that ability there. And all of a sudden, Zor would shoot over there. And you're like, no, I wanted it over there. I've, I've, put, I've put the glass gas there. Hit there. And then you put one that way. And then Zor would finally hit it. But then you're like, well, now I've used two abilities. And that one's just wasted. So it was quite frustrating for me trying to get him to target a certain area that I wanted him to target. And so then, the kind of solution is, don't just take one. So then, let's remember, who did we put them on? So we've got it on Rook. We've got it on Brainstorm. We're going to level this guy up. We're going to play the odds. We can't control where they're going to hit. So we're going to hit everything. Plain and simple. Guys, level 10. So now we've got a max 4 star, we've got a max 5 star, we've got a max 3 star. And they are. Let's equip this on someone as well. So we've got it on. Um, Rook. We've got it on Brainstorm. And then. Um, we'll put it on Red Alert, I think. Yeah. 
there we go. An SG sound with a light reference. Tactical nuke inbound. <laughs> the Call of Duty reference. <laughs> okay. Um, got brainstorm. Actually, I have to put on red alert. I wanted it on. Um, gold bug actually. Let's change that round. So we've got brainstorm, who does uh, obviously uh, his ability where it causes loads of damage in an area. We could probably put air raid on there as well if we wanted to. Uh, and then we're going to drop Rook as well. Rook, Brainstorm, Gold Bug. Let's go in zone 13 to start with. Chase and roll this pup when you can't control the odds. Change the game. <laughs> so, I've not actually even tried this actually yet. This is just sort of recently I sort of thought about this and we're sort of set up for the stream. So, we'll see how we go. We've obviously tried the uh, bots beforehand, but not to this sort of extent. Deploy! So let's drop him over there. We'll drop that over there. There we go. There's one. Drop that over there. The natural DPS will take that out anyway. And now we're raiding orbital strikes. Put that down as well. And there we go. Orbital strikes galore. Also got a Titan here helping out as well. Doesn't help, does it? Let's be honest. But you can see there, those orbital strikes are epic. They really are. But then the question is, if you're going to put these three on a team, who are you going to take off? And don't forget, that is zone 13. Once you start going higher, it gets a lot harder. So. Let's take... We've got healers in there. Let's take this whole team into... We're going to get some... Let's put some AoE in there as well. Some AoE damage but not rush in so we could put a uh, we could put hound in there as well it is a combat hold on here definitely needs a combat there we go we're gonna put a nice juicy hound in there as well um sensius magnus no we'll put a uh, yeah, I think we'll do with that. I think that will do. I'm trying to think anyone else. Uh, maybe Blades. That was hot, so doesn't it? Bumblebee, maybe. No, we'll be alright. We'll alright with this. We'll alright with this. We're alright. We're okay. We're okay. Let's go zone 15. Atari's but I think I'm taking off Night Stalker. That's a good point. You know, that is one good option. If you have Night Stalker on your team, I probably would take Nine Stalker off for this guy. And I'm pleased with that because I've always said that content should progress. And is this guy better than Night Stalker and Dial? Yeah, 100%. Is he good? Yeah, 100%. Is he perfect? No. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I do understand the mechanic. But I like the fact that, you know, it can be powerful and it can be good in certain situations. And that's what these guys should be. Deploy. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a load of damage in an area, so let's just uh, do a bit of Hound over here, we'll do a bit of Sea Spray over here, do a bit of Slow Down here, and keep the guys alive, go back up there, look over there, and hopefully now, these, a lot of these defenses will be quite low on health, and hopefully Zor and the other bots will maybe take them out. There you go, there's the orbital strikes. Woo! There we go. There we go. Do a bit of hound up there. Do a bit of sea spray over there. Bang, 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 bang. bang. 
So there you go, guys. You know, pretty impressive there. You know, yeah, there's no combine and things like that. And yeah, we've got a good team around it. But if you could put an AOE team around it and do a lot of damage, this guy's going to do pretty good. <coughs> but you need multiples. You need at least two of these in a team, I think. Maybe three. To sort of keep hitting them over and over again. Because you can't rely on one. You can't just rely on one of it and go, yeah, he's going to go and hit something. And then hit something else. You know. And then Atari, it's a good point. Again, Atari's put that, you know, but I rung, rung, I put rung on match it. This is what we, this is what I want, guys. I want people to have a bit of a, a bit of a conundrum where people are like, you know what, I like this combat, but I like this combat. Which one do we use? And I had the same sort of problem recently between shield drawn and stripes. And for me, that shows when you've got a decent bot at a decent level that's balanced in the game. Because once it's balanced in the game, you might think, well, actually, I'm going to put this guy in there. But I'm losing this from my team if I do that. that so I get an advantage. But I get an advantage from this bot, and I lose that advantage, and it a disadvantage. Which one do I use? And all of a sudden, then, your team is different than mine, because I prioritise something else. And that's what these combat should be about. This what, That's what bot should be about. It's just to give you some sort of advantage, like Smokescreen, for example. Amazing bot. But you can't help but think, yeah, but well, if he gets hit by something hard... He's dead because his health is so low. And that's his disadvantage. Very high DPS. Very low health. Very big advantage. Very big disadvantage. And that's where it should be. All bots should be balanced in some way. This bot does incredible damage. But it's quite expensive at a repeat cost or the initial cost or whatever. So I can get a good use out of it. But I maybe only use it twice. Whereas this bot is cheaper. Does less damage. But I can use this five or six times. And that's where the balance comes in. There should be some sort of thing where you're going, I like this, but I don't like that about it. And every bot should have that. You know, every bot should have some sort of downfall or something about it where you think, oh, if I took that off, then I might lose that. But and every bot should have some sort of advantage as well. And that's what I think this bot gives. You know, it's not overpowered to the point where you're like, this is crazy amazing. But also, and it's going to get nerfed in two months or something. But then it's also not where you look at and go, well, no, I'd rather keep this bot on it from two years ago. You know, we don't want two-year content as more relevant than current content. So, I've been campaigning for a long time for an improvement to combat, an improvement to bots. At the minute, uh, Spinister and Rotorstorm, I'm loving Rotorstorm. Absolutely loving Rotorstorm. Uh, this leaderboard, I'll be leveling my Rotorstorm to 60. He's a four-star, and I'll be leveling to 60. He's got his uses. He's absolutely, well, what's it, absolutely amazing. But it can be really, really good in certain situations. I think it really suits my team. So, you know, I'm going to level him. That's really good. And we want these bots to sort of progress a bit. And not quite be 5 stars, but 4.5 stars. Where you think, yeah, they're really good. But they don't quite have the health or DPS that you'd want. Um, so, yeah. You know, I, I think we're going in the right direction. I really do. Will HU18 change that and make these bots less relevant? Who knows? But we've had some good bots recently. You know, we've had Goldbug. Uh, we've had uh, Rotorstorm. Um, SG Shockwave. And obviously uh, Spinister as well. We've got these combats. SG, um, SG Steeljaw. Uh, and SG Ravage weren't quite there for me. But they were so good. And we're getting to a point now where I can be more positive about these things. Where the bots are getting better. And I'm quite pleased about that. Um, so yeah. Super pumped about these guys. Yeah, I'd like them. I think you've got to equip at least two. Will they go on my team? I don't know. I'm still sat here now thinking, who would I take off though? Would I take off Rung? Would I take off Shieldron? I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, going to be really interesting to see. But yeah, really super pumped about these bots. Uh, can't wait for it to come to the game. And uh, it's going to be interesting nonetheless. Yeah. Hopefully we're going to get a good 5-star batch coming to the game. Because I think all the current 5-star uh, batch of combats have got a few duds in. So hopefully going forwards, this could be a really good batch to pull from. Yeah. Cool. So, something else I want to sort of touch upon. So, me and Tex were talking today about uh, Blaster versus Gnar. And the advantages of both. I'm firmly on the side of Blaster. He's firmly on the side of Gnar. Uh, so I just want to sort of put Blaster into action and sort of show you guys how I set up my Blaster, how I use him and how good he actually is. I know people say like, oh he's really good, but I don't think people actually even realise how good he is. Is he the best bot in the game? 
Honestly, maybe. That Honestly, that's how good he is. And I know people might sit there going like, what? Best bot in the game? Yeah. Honestly, he is that good. Honestly. Ridiculously good. So, this is my setup that I use. So, uh, Quintus, around 17, 18, is not even that high. Uh, I don't believe in maxing his prime cores out. It just takes too many cores. It's crazy amount to take. Uh, my track's done level 10, but we'll stick with level 9 for now. Uh, I'm not going to take him into a zone 14 battle on his own. Literally on his own. Autobots, roll out. Well, actually, we can't because uh, a Titan. Hell, we'll take him into zone 15 on his own. Hell. We'll take him on a base trial. Grand Titan saying, don't be a wuss, max out the cores. Nope. I don't believe in maxing anything. Keep it quiet, but just a bit short. That's what we want. Let's just put someone in. So let's do now a battle. So this is a zone 15 battle, basically. This keeps the uh, Titans occupied. Bricks Motion asks, who should I chase? Blast the five star RC spray. Uh, I think Blast, you know. No score. I mean, Sea Spray is very, very good. Don't get me wrong, it can be absolutely amazing. But for how good Blaster is, absolutely incredible. So we're going to put Blaster down. We're going to use three ability points. That's all. So, what people don't realize is that his minions actually heal himself. And you can see his health will go back up here the more that they do damage. See there, his health is regenerating again. Health regen. And don't forget, there's only three ability points to use right now. See his health lot? His health is not dropping. His health drops a bit. Okay, that's fine. Let's get him back up again. Pops an outpost spot that's not helping, but hey. But don't forget, guys, this is a zone 15 attack as well on his own. My uh my burgers put he put Alchemist on him. Well, Alchemist is alright, but um It's definitely uh not Quintus. The outpost spots have really killed him right now, so it's actually quite cool. <laughs> Sea spray is very, very, very good. Very, very, very good. Let's take his outpost away. It's a bit unfair, that. Let's be honest. Try and expect Blaster to take on all his defenses. And uh, let's just uh, make a slight adjustment a minute. There we go. Because obviously Blaster minions don't like walls, do they? We know this. We're not daft. So yeah, you'll never see a, a count of a blaster, really. <laughs> I don't think so, anyway. Okay, let's get rid of the walls. You're not going to use blaster to get through walls. It's unreasonable. It's not going to take on two uh, outpost bots either. So let's go again. We've still got the outpost bots there, to be fair, but be a bit better with the... Uh... Blaster. There we go. Quintus taking effect as well. I think it's more the shock tower that's not well for helping at all, actually. We've even got a smoke screen out there now. Which is not helping at all.
we must get rid of these outpost bots, we'll be fine. <laughs> and there we go, back in action again. I think. Oh, now our Titan's coming back. <laughs> this should be the bloopers reel. <laughs> this is how good Bossa is. Chromia. Titan. <laughs> yeah, he's not taking on Titan, let's be honest. Right, let's try again. This is how good Blaster is. Awful. <laughs> Maybe we need to give Blaster an uh, anti stun. <laughs> right, okay, here we go now. Game face on. Okay, Blaster down. Plus as many ends. Quintus, here we go. So, just for three ability points used, like I said, we're not going to use any more. We're just going to let him run the course. So, yes, we've got an MDS. We've got all the normal defenses, so we're not sort of hiding from anything. You know, yes, we took outpost bots away, but again, you're not going to expect that. You're not going to expect to blast as many to be Chromia. It's not going to happen. See what I had to do. So, as well, Quintus is going to come in here. Anything they destroy. So, let's put the minions that way. Put Blaster this way. Keeps him alive. Look, full health still again. They'll head that way. They'll path in this way, hopefully. There we go. Blaster now with Quintus will take out this side. Minions will take out that side. Get rid of that Titan, we don't want it. And look, still still only what? Nine ability points used. We cleared this whole section out. You no, know, like I said, this is zone 15, it's not a hard mode, but zone 15. And you can literally just go through the base. What about the outpost bots? Slaying ward down a bit. Them up that way. Don't forget, guys, where you cast them, they won't drop there. They obviously walk up there. But now you can see, look, Chromia Tower up there. Smoke screens up there. Well away. Let's use minions again. So, because we transformed Blaster, these bots will disengage and re engage for his minions instead. And there's our overpowered Titan taking making light work at the top of the base. And there we go. There's Chromia down. Then we're gonna drop these minions up there to protect Blaster. There, loads of Quinta Sharks because we're destroying all these defenses now as well. Full health still. He still hasn't lost his health. Because the Sharks are gone, because the minions heal him. So he doesn't lose his health. And if you do get a bit of trouble, throw some minions at it. So I was going to run out a bit of time here because the rocket thing. But you're talking about one bot in Zone 15. That's what you're talking about. One single bot, and these minions last forever. And in terms of stats, they are absolutely crazily good. So all you really need to add in here is one high DPS bot. It's job done. Freedom and justice will prevail. And looking at Blaster's stats as well, I mean, wow, compared to Nor, I just think it's another level. So, you're talking 30,000 health and 430 DPS. So, at ability 11, uh, you release 4 minions into battle with 50% of your health. So, if you've got 4 minions with 50% of health, it means each minion has 15k health. We've just said how good Zor is. 
at 20k health. This guy's got 15k health times four of those. So the minions alone have 60k health. 60k. Add blaster, that's 90k health on the field. And then if you're adding 83% of the damage, so let's call it about 350 times four. That's 1,400 DPS, 1,800 DPS. So you're talking about a bot with 90k health and 1,800 DPS. That's unheard of. You're not going to get that anywhere in the game. If that was a new bot coming out that had 90k health and had 1,500 DPS, you'd be sat there going, that's game breaking. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely crazy. You know, absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, absolutely crazily good. I can see some people in the chat talk about Gnaw. Um, and Gnaw minions have 65% of Gnaw's health. Now, Gnaw will get through a lot faster in that sense, but offer a lot less protection. Lot less protection. So, in terms of Gnaw, I've got his core here. So, maybe we can uh, upgrade it a bit. We've got some, I think we're a bit short on resources, though, I think. But in terms of this here, so uh, unleash four Sharticons. Uh, we've got great abilities, actually. Let's see what we got. Let's get into some more Sharks. My no, uh, has just got to uh, 61. So unleash six Sharks that have 30% of your health. So Nor's health is a lot, lot lower. So let's... Let's call it 15k. Let's even round it up. I mean, it's only level 60, so let's call it 15k. Right, I can say it might be about 18k, but so 15 just for maths. 16k, but compromise. 16k health. So 30% of that. Let's say 18k <laughs> for quick maths. So 18k health. So each one has six. So six times six is 36k, plus his 18. That's still only 50k health. It's still almost half of what Blaster's minions have got. It's still not quite there. It's a lot less health. Where you get from no is that you've got 63% of your damage. So because he has such high DPS, quite like 700 DPS. So the shards comes up about 500 DPS each. So it's 500 DPS times 6. That's 3000 DPS plus no, that's 3700 DPS. And that's the balance you've got to choose. Do you want massive damage, but they're going to die a lot quicker? Or do you want massive health that don't do as much damage? And for me, I don't need that damage. I need that protection because I've got bots that do damage. I've got Top Shot in there. I've got Flak in there. I've got Primer in there. All of these things will do damage anyway. I don't need to get through the base any faster. I'm not running out of time. But what those... What those... Uh, those companions add not companions sorry those are uh, you know those bots is that they add so much hp on the field to protect those gunners and what i can do is i can throw them at a certain defense that's causing problems i've had times where sea sprays walked off and because it's walked off it's gonna get in danger and i've just thrown some minions at it throw the minions over there they'll take the damage this 60k health there it's like having two tanks in front of sea spray you wouldn't worry about sea spray if there's two tanks in front of him you wouldn't. But then again, if three gunners are out on their own, so as in Nars DPS, yeah, he's got okay health, but if three gunners walk off, they're not going to last as long. So you can use Blaster a lot better to protect your gunners. Now, like I said, I'm not for one minute calling it not any worse. It's not that a bad bot by any means. It's an amazing bot. Absolutely amazing. But for me, I think Blasters gives that edge of protection over damage. You've got bots that can do damage. You need bots that can do protection. And you could say, well, yeah, I've got bots that do protection, so maybe I use North for damage. It's all, it all depends on you guys. Like I said, uh, there's no right and wrong way. But uh, for me, uh, you know, that 90k health that you give Blaster uh, with his minions is absolutely crazy. And then when you add the fact, like I said, that once you put the tracks on there, and once you get the, uh, you know, DPS increase, which is minimal, but that healing increase, all your attacks heal for 11% of the damage done. That is the main key. That is the big one there. I was talking with Tex today, and he said he loves Lionizer or no, because it gives him that more damage. He wants that damage. Where I was saying that, you know, I like Draxton because that more healing, that more protection. It depends what angle you want to go at. 
Do you want more protection? Do you want more damage? But for me, Blaster still pips it. I, I, he wouldn't. He's the one bot now that has not left my team for a long, long, long time. And I really can't see another bot replacing him. No, I won't replace him at a port of five star. And I can't see any other tank replacing him. No tank is ever going to have 90k health. No one. To give you an idea, my rook on my team maxed out on my live server. 35k health, something like that. It's still only half of what Blaster's minions give. You know, it's absolutely crazy. Like I said, so for me, Blast is one of the most important aspects of my team. And probably one of the best bots in the game. Absolutely amazing bot that uh, you cannot overlook. And like someone said earlier, Sea uh, Spray or Blaster. Everyone knows how good Sea Spray is. We've got a counter for Sea Spray now. Uh, and the, the counter for Blaster is pretty much just Shock Towers, really. And AoE defenses. But Beam Lasers with Blaster, not a problem. Not a problem at all. You know, Beam Lasers were so important at one time. But throwing some, uh, you know, some minions at it. They don't cause a problem. They can't destroy their minions. And there's, not, there's too many of them. You know? You just got to be careful around shock towers. Uh, be careful around cannons. Because obviously they'll go through the minions. Uh, and be careful around mortars taking them out quite quickly. But once you can get through them. Beam lasers just aren't a problem. Honestly. Turrets. Not a problem. Outpost bots. Go and pop them. Job done. you got to think that's another advantage that he has over Nar as well. That he can pop outpost bots where Nar can't. So, yeah, you know, they've both got advantages, but for me, Blaster is uh, one on his own. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Brix Motion's put, do I chase Blades or Blaster? Blaster. If it's Choice Stream, Blades or Blaster? Definitely Blaster. Blaster's up there with the best bots in the game. You can't go wrong with Blaster. Honestly, like, it will fit in any team. He is good for Zen farming. He is good for power leveling. He's in my war team and will never, ever leave. I'm, I'm sat here now thinking of a better bot in the game than Blaster over everything. And I'm struggling. I'm really struggling. Is Blaster the best bot in the game? Maybe. Maybe. Something to think about. Something to think about. No, still about Blaster's not getting a counter soon. They've already got counters. Listen. If you throw his minions at a shock tower, they are going to wipe him out very quickly. And they can't reverse something that's been in the game for six months and is in the meta. Something like that. Would I like an AoE defense for HQ18? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I would like an AoE defense maybe more. I think we're lacking a bit in AoE. You know, we've got the MDS, I suppose. So that's an that's a AoE. The HQ18 upgrades will go against Blaster a bit. So, I think he's, I honestly think he's well balanced. I think he's very powerful. But, again, the big one for me is when you can drop him on the launch pad and spam the ability. Blaster's, is, Blaster's ability is not one you can spam. You're not going to spam it and take half the base out with you. It's protection. You know? And it, and it takes time to get through that base. It's not like you can take out a max base on his own. You know, like we said, we saw there that, you know, we had to change the base round a bit and... You know, he didn't quite get through the base. You know, he is very good. That wasn't on hard mode. It's just zone 15. Um, but, you know, that is a maxed out with a max 5 star. And, you know, a pretty much a maxed out Quintus. You know, it's very important. All them parts are in there. Um, but, yeah. He's very, very good. But I don't think he needs countering. Listen. And I'm not here saying, like, oh, protect Blaster. Because I've said Goldfire needs a counter. Because from the launch pad, he could do so much damage. Pop up the outpost. It's a bit overpowered. Sea Spray from the launch pad could do incredible amount of damage and take out the base out before you even start. Is Blaster going to do that on his home from the launch pad? No, he's not. Like I said, he's got to walk through that base like any other bot. You know, do I want to see a counter for him? No, no, I don't want to see a counter for him because I, I think he's perfectly balanced. There, there has to be some bot in the game that is the best. There has to be. And you can't go in, like, keep going, well, he's the best, so I've got to counter him. Now, he's the best, so I've got to counter him. And... You know, we've got to have it where these bots are not overpowered. And I think that is well balanced. And Warpath SB has got a good point there that, you know, remember when Blast was one of the worst bots in the game? Yeah, he was. And they made him absolutely epic. And I think it's amazing. You know, do we need a count off a Rook? No, we don't need a count off a Rook. He's there for an outpost popper. That's his job. Do we need a count off a Blaster? No, he's well balanced. I think I think most bots in the game now are well balanced. I don't think we need any more counters for more bots. I'd like to see a slowdown or a heal counter. 
personally, because I think walks are overpowered now, and there's no counter for slowdown. But if people use it, brilliant. If they don't, fine. People use slowdown more. But I think we need an anti kill core and anti slowdown core. And then we've got to count for everything, and no one can complain that something's overpowered. People can say, like, oh, a walk's overpowered. Well, then equip some anti heal cores then. Or reduce healing cores. Not anti heal, but reduce healing. It might reduce healing by 30%, mate, or 25%, something like that. And people go, like, well, that means I've got to take an FFD core off. Well, yeah, that's the idea. If you're going to reduce my healing, maybe you can use blades. Well, I'm going to use both. Okay, well, I'll use sea spray then. Oh, well, I, I'm going to use a lightning core. Okay, then, that's fine. Then I'm going to use Blades. And that's what you want, guys. You want those with all the bots and all the options. They can swap and change. Where lower players, they might struggle a bit and go, like, you know what? I'm missing this key component. You know, I want that. You know, there's there's always some, you know, there's always counters. And there's always, should always be options to get past those counters. That's the idea. We only had three or four build bots. It was very easy. Just put them on the base. And, you know, there was no way to sort of uh, beat the base because it was counted all these bots. But now we've got, you know, ones against uh, blades and we've got against tracks and can beat warpath and all these things. And yeah, and the tower is put, don't get warp counters. Listen, it's not a case of just warp counter, but anti-healing counter. Um, but yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? You know, people could not use healers. Or... Uh, you can start using tracks again, or you can use blades, or you can use slowdown. It's about then looking at other options in the game. It's not about just going, yeah, I can walk every single base. It gets a bit boring. And then we can say, listen, there are options for people to use it. People might not use it because they might prefer something else. They might prefer anti-stun. They might prefer anti-hack. Listen, options, 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 options. I, personally, I don't want to see the same old teams in the game. I don't want to see the same old bots being used the same old way. I don't want to see the same old outposts in the game. I don't want to see the same old base designs. I don't want to see anything like that. We are going to see it, but I want some variation. We're just seeing far too many of the same designs in bases. Far too many very similar teams in the game. And, uh, you know, it's just too much of that in the game, I think. We need some, uh, you know, people going to think a bit outside the box, really. Yeah. Bricks Moses, but... Uh... <laughs> Do I hear giveaway? Yeah, of course. Why not? <laughs> we're going to look at my account. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Okay. Here's a good one for you. Okay. So, put your answers in the chat before we go to my main account. Um, how many five-star shards have I got right now in my main account? The closest five people win a Sunstreak was a Stash Crystal. How many five star shards have I got on my main account? And we'll go and have a look and I will explain, uh, you know, why I'm hoarding certain things and what I think and, uh, yeah. So just five star shards, just five star bot shards, just to be uh, sure. How many five star bot shards have I got right now? Closest five people, yeah. Put it in the chat, guys. So, yeah, obviously, it's pretty obvious that I'm saving five-star shards. Uh, that's a given. So, yeah, it's a fair few, guys. Don't be putting, like, ten or oh, one thousand. I've got quite a few. Um, so, yeah, I'm saving them for these combiners. I just, just I want to know what they're going to do. I want to know how we're going to get these five-star combiners. And I said to Yanis, I think it's unreasonable to ask us to get all the parts. But I think they will. I think they will make us uh, get all five spots because Yannis said he doesn't want the game evolving around five-star combiners and he doesn't want to make them necessary. And he said something that I've done a video on that's going to be posted this week. He said that he doesn't think that you have to have five-star bots or five-star combiners to play at the uh, top level of the game. And I disagree. And I've done a bit of video on it. More of that then. Like I said, you can tune in and watch that. Uh, but I disagree, and I've sort of given my reasons for and things like that. But um, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll make they'll make you get five or five bots. So what I've done is I'm saving my five star shard so I can make that decision. I don't want I need first aid, streetwise, and rook. Uh, no, first sorry, first aid, streetwise, and hotspot. Uh, I also need a swoop, grimlock, and slug if he comes out so i'm saving my shards for when the next batch is released 
or what's happening around five star combiners and then we can go from there basically uh, I can make an educated choice so I'm literally gonna keep saving my five star shards until they either announce the combiners and how we're gonna be able to achieve them or until they announce the new batch and we'll go from there and see um, but yeah you know I personally don't think you should need all five I think that if you need all five there is gonna be 99% of the players in the game who will never get a five star version of those combiners I think if you need three, I think that's reasonable. If you say you just need a part, then it's going to be like a Mega Supreme. Everyone's going to have it. But then I did suggest that maybe if they bring it out as a part, you could only equip it to one bot. So it's similar to... All right, so it's going to be a bit of a weird one. But uh, I was playing Pokemon with Jake today, and it's very similar to that. So in, in uh, Let's Go Pikachu, you could evolve one of your Pokemon. But once you evolve one of them, for that rest of that battle, you can't evolve another one. So you've got like an evolved token. And you can evolve it. So, for example, you might be able to evolve uh, Predaking or um, Volcanicus. So you might use this. And it might last a week, say. For example. And for a week, that if it's at level 20, he now becomes a 5-star. It just gets a 5-star ability and a bit of a HP upgrade, maybe. For that week, once it runs out, you equip it again. So you've only got one at a time. So that means that people don't have like five five star combiners. They still got Mogus Mega Supreme, and they've got one other. So that sort of helps you in wars a bit. You know, I, I think that would be pretty decent. You know, doing that. Um, or like I said, being able to get three bots. Uh, getting five, I think, is a bit a bit of a stretch. Five bots, yeah. Warpath said he thought it was three out of five. That's just something I suggested. I think three is reasonable. Having three bots out the combiner. I don't think it's too much. I think two is a bit less because it's quite easy to get two. Uh, I think three is enough out of multiple batches. So, yeah. That's a good point, my burger. You know, there's some bots out there that are really quite poor. I don't want a five-star first aid or hotspot. I really don't. I'm pulling it just for that combiner. The other bots I'm happy with. You know, I'm sure there's combiners out there where there's at least three bots with people going, you know, I'm happy with them three. It might be a five-star Mirage, a five-star Optimus, and a five-star... I don't know, Prowl maybe, and that's the thing you're happy with. It means you don't have to chase Sunstreak, you don't have to chase Iron Hide, they come out as five stars. You know, there's some bots out there people just don't want. Yeah. Uh, Risk Goose put, I would want to see a five star ability though, not just more health or damage. Yeah, definitely. We definitely need a five star ability put in there. 100 million percent. Uh, but yeah, it's, worth, it's yet to be seen. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see. So, let's have a look at my uh, main account. I think I can change this now. There we go. So I'm also saving four star shards. Um, for a simple reason that they may release some cores for HQ 18. And, uh, you know, I saved a lot of, um, a lot of Shanix, uh, a lot of crystals for when the new MSM cores came out and the new Billbot cores. And I'm paying the dividends now. So I've got... Uh, three gold MSM mines, one G metal. I've got two G metal anti hack. Uh, I've got two G metal anti stun cores, two G metal FFD on my base. Uh, and so, you know, it's only MSM mines I'm missing now. You need at least gold. Uh, I had a couple of silver at first. Uh, but, you know, after using all the uh, Shanix up, then yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've got a level 17 force field disruptor there times two. We've got a uh, anti hack core there times one. Um, and then we've got a uh, uh, lightning rod at the bottom there. And then uh, if we can select it. I hate these shield gems. <laughs> and then we've got an empty stun there as well. Obviously to combat sea spray. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite happy with them cores and decent. And that's why I'm saving them. So let's have a look. So quite a few guesses in the chat. And it's not letting me scroll. There we go. So, drum roll, please. We have got 7,125. So, who was the closest? So, Kelmeister, 7K. You're close. Well done. Grind time, 7K. Bricks Motion, 7K. Well done. 
So you three have definitely sort of pretty much hit the nail on the head. Chris Harmon's got 7k as well. So you four guess 7k. So well done. Then we've got who's close? Who's close? Who's close? I think it's Brian Miller as well. Brian Miller put 6,781. Uh, you could have a code. Let's have a look. Who else? Smokey put 7.5k. You could have a code as well. I think that's everyone that was close by, I think. Is that everyone that put 7, 7.5k in? And Mike Bergie as well. It was in 500 pretty much. So Mike Bergie as well. So yeah, the cordial your name out. So Mike Bergie, Kelmeister, Grind Time, Bricks Motion, uh, Brian Miller, uh, Warpath SB, uh, Smokey, and Chris Harmon. So if you can all contact me uh, after the game, then uh, I will give you a Sunstreak Water Crystal for that as well. Congratulations. Um... And uh, Ty is saying, damn was I get your five star shard game up. Uh, don't forget, I have got eight crystals here. So that's another thousand shards. So uh, I've got eight thousand shards there. Uh, and my feelings, but how did you get so many? Saving up. Plain and simple. I've been saving since before Christmas. So obviously, the top of lines, then we complete every single event. So we'll get 1,000 shards in the five star event. We'll get 1,500 from the battle pass. Obviously, buy crystals as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's a 20k. Good for you. Yeah, but you started a lot more than me, to be fair. Let's be honest. Like, I think you started this current batch with 25k and just pulled it all when it came out and then started uh, again. Uh, for those that want to know how to get a code, uh, just find me on Discord, Sunstreak Waza. Uh, hit me up there and just say, Hi, I'm such a person from the stream. I guessed uh, uh, how many um, five star shards I would have. Uh, and yeah, I will give you a lot of code. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, though, as well, uh, combiners. So, uh, we've got Max Team at 23, we've got 81k. So, Currently leveling up Dispensor, like I said. Uh, streetwise, I think, will be in the next batch. So if I save my shard, and it is three bots, I'm going to try and pull Streetwise. So I I'm okay with that. I don't mind getting some new toys, and I, I would like to use Streetwise. So, yeah, I'm down for that. I've got none of those bots yet. Maybe a five-star nose cone. Uh, I've got a one in two chance of swoop, so I don't mind chasing him between him and Impactor. So I'm fine with that. So two crystals will get me swoop, definitely. And that will mean I've got the three. Uh, Grimlock's a one in five, so that's a bit more, of, a bit more of a chance. But I don't want Grimlock. I wouldn't mind Swoop for defense, but Grimlock's a bit of a meh. Uh, and hopefully Slug will be decent. It needs a bit of a rework though, if they do bring Slug in the current batch. But again, I could pull the current batch and get Slug, and then I'll have three Dino Bots if it is three out of five. Um, Victorian, um, I wouldn't want Rustus at all. I expect we'll see at least one of these guys or girls even. Uh, in the next batch as well, maybe. I think we'll see a lot of combiner bots in the next batch. Um, we've obviously got Firefly and Silver Bolt. Uh, I think we'll see one of these as well. So I think we'll see one of these guys. So Air Raid, Alpha Bravo, Sky Arrow, Power Glide. Um, I don't think we'll see any more of them yet. Uh, I don't think we'll see any of them. I think we'll see one of these maybe. So yeah. Um, I think we'll see Slug maybe. Maybe not. Uh, I don't think you've seen any of them. I think we'll see one more of these. I think they'll make it so there's at least three in every batch. So we've uh, we need one, uh, one out of the uh, uh, Superion. We need one out of Victorion. Uh, we've got enough Dinobots. One out of Computron at least to start that process. Um, yeah, I think we'll see that at least. I do. I really do. Hoping it's streetwise, but. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I really do hope. There is a 5 star on China server. So, yeah. I'm a bit behind as well. I'm actually going to do a bit of a... Like I said, I had a busy week. So, in terms of tech tree, i still got some battles to do. I've still got some Zen farming to do. So, I'm going to be up quite late tonight doing some battles. Um, but, yeah. But, in terms of... Let's do a bit of Zen farming, as always. So, if you see my uh, video on Magna Boss with a bit of zen farming so i've done a bit already um but yeah it's always room for more let's be honest but uh, magna boss is uh absolutely epic it really is. 
So let's take some um, some bots that can do some leveling. So I think I've done all my zone uh, 14 attacks now. So I've run out of bots that can do zone 14. Um, and now we're going into zone 13, doing 10k per battle now, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, Jason Rowley put Mirage needs to be a 5 star, and Atari said it could be fun for Mirage 5 star. Yeah, I agree, it would be pretty decent. Would. I'd like to see a 5 star Mirage, definitely. Uh, William Wilkinson was going to ask our level a three star get. Uh, my Comfortron is four star. The three star can only go to level ten. So there is that to consider. We'll do a bit of a Rotor Storm actually. I love Rotor Storm. I love Rotor Storm. My new favorite bot at the minute. So, um, yeah. We've actually got a war attack actually. We'll do a war attack and a bit of Zen farming. How's that one? That sounds good. Yeah, Berserk's put that, you know, Mirage means breakdown, that means it's closer to a uh, five star menace, or maybe, maybe, you never know. But there is quite a few Minnesota bots already out, so maybe we'll see Hound and Dragship instead. Don't forget, we've got a community choice as well. I I'm voting for Hound, without a doubt. I'd love a five star Hound. But I'm sure there's someone that would vote for combiner bots anyway. But yeah. So we're in a war against uh, one Empire. Uh, oops, oops, I'm sure cause. So, Chibi 300 ZX. Let's have a look at his base. Yeah, I'd love a bit of Hound and Drag Shop as a 5 star. Okay, so first we've got to look at the issues with the base. So, let's have a look at the cause. So, anti hack at the front there. Uh, we've got two FFDs there. We've got a healing core and a healing core. So, once this is gone. We can hack whatever really. So now we're looking at places where there's um, defenses that can, uh, you know, not AOE as such, uh, but you know, could do a lot of damage. So cannons, turrets, beams. So this is a good section here to hack. To hack. We can hack this really well there because we've got three defenses in close proximity that can do a lot of damage to one target. So they're good to hack. Um, mortars are not very good to hack. Um, only shock towers really if they've got something in range and they've got thunderstorm. So don't look at missile launchers and mortars really to hack. You're looking at beams, cannons and turrets. So that's a prime position there for a hack. Prime position there for a hack. So we are going to take blades. Uh, I'm going to take sludge as well to get through this wall here. Uh, I think I might actually hit there, I think. And that might take this out maybe. I want to try and hit this wall as well. But I might just put it here actually just walk through. Um, put Rook there and um, that will pop them to outposts and do a bit of damage to the wall and hopefully get through the wall as well um, but yeah we're going to take Sludge to get through this I don't like this path in it's going to make the bots walk around and walk around here as well and split when I'm going through the middle so we're going to go through the middle with Sludge uh, there's no um, there's no cause for Sea Spray the anti uh, anti stun cause so we're going to go through the middle and then we're going to go Sea Spray times a couple up there I might even take, yeah, they've got armor, so they're not taking jet fire, so jet fire is no use here, so I'm not going to bother. We could get through to these anyway, so don't need to, so don't need to take jet fire with me. Um, but yeah, might even take Bumblebee for this middle section once we've hacked it, we can sort of stun this area here. So, the team lineup is going to be Rook to put the outpost, Blaster as always, two healers as always. Uh, we're going to put Sludge in for this bottom section, we're going to put Sea Spray in to do that damage there, and then Bumblebee as well. And that is the plan. And that's what I talk about top players. You should be able to look at a base like that and say, this is this is what I'm putting in there. So we're going to put Bumblebee in there. Uh, we're going to take Rhinox out. I take Rhinox in case there's things behind the HQ uh, to take out, but there's not. So I can take him out. Um, so yeah, is there anyone else I need? Do I need to take Laser Optimus out for anyone? Uh, no, we're good to go there. Slash it out the cooking out 61. He'll be getting leveled, or she'll be getting leveled uh, in leaderboard. Uh, oh, blades as well. Yeah, blades. And that will do. Taking a lot of gunners here. I know we take two gunners, maybe three at most. So we've got three. So cool. Uh, we'll take um, we'll take Magna Boss for this one. And then we're going to go. 
Yeah, I tell you, I voted for Five Star Hound. Everyone voted for Red Alert. I was like, trust me, you don't want Red Alert. I knew the counter was coming. I was like, you don't want Red Alert. Trust me. I vote for Hound and no one listened and we got Red Alert and then straight away got the counter the week later. Yeah. My after this is I want Five Star Punch. Good bot. Beast Wars Silverbolt. Yep, good bot. Chromia. I can't see it happening though. Uh, Gold Bug. Uh, not too sure about that as a Five Star. Uh, but Rotostorm, definitely, yeah. There we go. I'm not going to drop minions yet because um, the shock tiles are going to take them out. Might use a heal bomb if we get a bit uh, a bit tricky here. Put the uh, right there, I think, sea spray. Rook's not quite in range yet. I don't think I'll get in range either, so that's probably the problem. Use blades there. Now I'm gonna throw the minions over there. We need to sludge in that wall there to get through it, I think. Where's Blaze? Blaze is in trouble, so we're gonna put a heal bomb down there to help him out. And we're gonna use Sea Spray up that way. Take this section out. And we're gonna use Bumblebee. Stun this section. There we go. Try and hack these two. I'm not sure we can hack them both, but we can use Bumblebee as well. Just to stun them. Maybe Rook's got stuck down here, but we can uh, use some minions. We can uh, stun this section up here. It's Blaster, so we're fine. If that was a uh, Blade's be trouble. Uh, yeah, it's base down now. We'll just fast forward it. Base down. Job done. Happy days. In fact, I've got to do my war attack after I think. Oh. It was a. Let's have a look at Slam, Sh Slam Shadow. Slum Shadow, is that it? Okay, so this sort of base is what we sort of see as an anti sort of sea spray base. So, again, we're looking at the problems. So, um, no build bots out front, really, apart from FFD, so we can we can hack this area um, quite easily. We can sea spray it, no problem. Uh, we've got armor cores on those, so unless we're going to take a combine and do damage, uh, not sure Jetfire will do. It's not too bad. We've got healing cores there. We've got healing cores close to them, which will heal them though. Um, and then we've got a shield generator behind the HQ, so we do need Rhinox. Uh, we could probably slush it, but I'm not a big fan of slush. So I'm going to use Sea Spray at this bottom section here. I'm going to try and path upwards. So we need to take all this out. So I'm going to take slush. I'm going to take Sea Spray. Sea Spray through this section here. Get rid of all this. Then we're going to path the bot upwards to here. Um, and then we're going to pop this outpost up here. Hopefully the bots will walk upwards. Maybe use Jetfire and the Morph there. And then use Magnavos to try and clear this section out. And then uh, hopefully path around. With, uh, with Mega Supreme, we can easily path it. No problem at all. But obviously we're not taking him. Um, we don't need Bumblebee as much, I don't think. Um, we're going to take these Optimus instead. Uh, I'm going to take... I think we're going to take Jetfire, I think. I was going to take a uh, small screen, but I think we'll go with that, I think. In fact, I might take Blades, actually, I think, because I can hack that bottom section as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go with that.
Let's go. Okay. So we're going to drop Rook quite high up here. We want to get all these bots up as high as we can, really, like I said. Um... So we're going to start using um, Laser Optimus and Sea Spray of this section here. Bomb as well. I'm not going to drop uh, the minions yet because I don't want to run off and half dip on there. But I do need to pop this outpost with rock, I think. Just in range, I think. There we go. Wait for the hat to drop. They took like a banner on the other side. Damage over here, I think we can get rid of that but which will help a bit. Do damage over here. We're going to put the uh, force star ability there because it will uh, help heal our bots as well. Crazy damage from Magna Boss. Now we're going to drop the minions. Our ability points behind, so we use Blaster there. We get one ability point back for uh, to use Rhinox to get to that shield gen. That's the idea. Can't quite get to it yet. And there we go. Take the shield gen out, and there we go. Path away from two outposts, straight to the HQ. We'll just speed it up a bit by using Laser Optimus and. Face down. Half like a pro. Kansas City Shuffle. I actually know the reference to that, actually. <laughs> Kansas City Shuffle. I like it. Okay. Savage Sid. So I've got this base. So again, we're just looking at the things that's going to stop us and what we can do instead. This is why I like options. Because you start looking and go like, right, I can't use that. I can use that. Etc. 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 So, long base. So we're going to start from the right hand side and try and walk across pretty much. But try and maybe walk up a bit. But the bots are going to go a bit this way regardless. So we've got uh, FFD again, protecting against tracks. So FFD, FFD, uh, FFD. I think FFD is a bit overkill there. Uh, we've got a heel core there and a heel and a oops heel core there. So there's no anti hack. And look at all this in the middle. We've got Point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense. That is a hacker's dream. We've even got a thunderstorm there as well, so we can hack the hell out of this. So um, I'm go probably going to use uh, sea spray through the middle there. I don't think we can avoid the combiner. It'd be interesting though. Uh, I might even open this wall here to go upwards with sludge. Maybe there. Maybe. I'd have to use a lot of sea spray and a lot of hack though be interesting so anything behind the HQ yep shield gen behind the HQ so I'm gonna take uh, Rhinox for that definitely so we definitely want blades we definitely want sea spray again we definitely want Rhinox this time um, what's on the MDS was it armor on the MDS no we've got 
attack on the MDS and attack. So we might be able to take them out with a boost and with a jet. So I'm going to take a jet as well. So we're going to take jet fire this time around. And then, um, yeah. I'm sure players do damage to the MDS. So we can uh, take them out with jet fire. So it's going to be a interesting attack, this one. Do the Harlem Shuffle. <laughs> Okay, so let's drop Rook first. So let's drop the hack here. Heal bomb here. And I'm gonna put a hack over there as well. Again, use that sea spray through there. Try and path the bots away from that bottom section. trying to stay away from the combiner but sea spray is passing quite poorly there but okay we put the outposts now we can drop this shock towers up there and elite is parked and so again we're gonna use the ability to try and keep his health upwards we're gonna pop that ability up there like I said put it on the the uh, thing a bit more, but hey, and then we're gonna take this out, fill it, it, boom. So, we're gonna use this uh, three star ability and get his health back up again. You can see his health will increase slightly, and then uh, we're gonna even hit that bean laid up there, take that out, hopefully, and then we'll even take a uh, the outpost but out there to try and pack them up with a bit. Don't pop it. Oh, they pop the outpost. I didn't want that. Never mind. It's not a disaster. And base down. <coughs> there we go. With Magna Boss. Absolutely amazing combiner. Honestly, amazing. Now, we're going to do them attacks later. Let's do some bit of Zen farming with Magna Boss again. I'll just save my um, Omega for a little while and do some more Zen farming with uh, Omega later. Straight, this is how I sort of do it. So I'll do my war attacks and then go straight in with Magna Boss. So we've got one battle. One. <laughs> Let's see how far we can go with Magna Boss in zone 13. If you want to see Magna Boss in action, go and check out my uh, How to uh, Zen Farm Like a Magna Boss video, where I just use Magna Boss just to do Zen Farming. That's uh, quite epic. Okay, so here's the idea. So with Rotor Storm, yeah, I don't think he'll do it. I don't know. We'll try. Uh, but with Rotor Storm, he's brilliant at cleaning up because obviously every defense that he kills means that he increases uh, his damage. So we want to do a lot of damage in an area. Maybe even, you know, um, clear it, but it doesn't matter if we don't. The main thing is we do huge damage in an area so we can get that damage uh, increase. Damage over there. Damage up there. Boom. 
Boom! Nice trap, bro. A storm. And his range is actually pretty good as well. Got any anti hair? Yeah, we need to get passive anti air, don't we? So let's try and stun them. Maybe stun them a bit early there. We need to take one of them out at least. There they go, Rotor Storm. Woo! And that is how you clear the section. I want to get as close to HQ as I can. Imagine this guy with ability 11. Imagine. 15 seconds left. Can we do it? Boom! Road to Storm at level 51 with Magna Boss. Level thir at zone 13. Well done. Pretty epic. Love this guy. Cannot wait to level him. I think one of the best 4 stars I've had in a long time. Probably the best 4 star of last year, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. But yeah. Absolutely immense. But uh, yeah, this is a bit of a long stream tonight, but I've really enjoyed it. A lot of information and, you know, it's been fun, guys. Uh, appreciate everyone for tuning in. And don't forget, guys, that, you know, if people are struggling to watch my stream and people say, yeah, I like Wazza's streams, but a bit too long, just say, hey, you know that it cuts these streams out and makes little snippets into them and little videos and, you know, for people to go and watch their leisure, they're like 10 minutes long. So, uh, yeah, there's always, you know, options to go and watch my content other than watch the stream but appreciate everyone that tunes in uh we'll see you next thursday as always and uh, like i said plenty of videos coming in the next few days watch out for them don't forget to hit a like button before you leave guys and don't forget to subscribe and hit a notification bell to never miss another stream ever again never miss another video never miss anything all right appreciate everyone for tuning in guys thanks for tuning in really thanks and peace out guys